The for of loop is a new way of looping over iterables in JavaScript. It was introduced in ES6. The syntax of for of loop is very simple and usable, and we can use for of loop to loop over any kind of iterable in JavaScript. So let's understand the use of for of loop with some practical examples. And let's start by understanding the syntax of for of loop. So the syntax of for of loop is first we need to use this for keyword followed by parenthesis and then inside this parenthesis first we need to declare a variable. Then we use off keyword and then the name of the iterable on which we want to loop over. And then we use curly braces and inside this curly braces we write the logic. So this is the syntax for the for of loop. Let's comment this syntax. I will keep it for your reference. And now let's use this for of loop to loop over this student's array. So let me copy this syntax. Let's paste it here. And here we are going to loop over an array. So in order to use this for of loop to loop over this student's array, First, we need to declare a variable. Let's call this variable item. Then we use off keyword followed by the name of the iterable. So here the name of this iterable is students. So we want to loop over this students array. Now here what will happen is when this for of loop will start iterating over this students array, for each iteration, for that corresponding iteration, the element will be assigned to this item variable. So for example, for the first iteration, this element John will be assigned to this item variable. For the second iteration, this element Mary will be assigned to this item variable. For the third iteration, this element Steve will be assigned to this item variable and so on. And then we can write our logic to do whatever we want to do with that element. So here, let's say we simply want to log the name of the student inside this developer console. So for that, let's say console.log and let's also add some strings saying that student name colon and then we want to log the name of the student for that corresponding iteration. And where do we have that name? We have it inside this item variable. So let's copy this and let's use it here. And that's it. Now if I save the changes, you will notice that for each iteration, the name of the student has been logged in the developer console. So for the first iteration, this item will be assigned with this value John and it will log student name colon John. For the second iteration, this item will be assigned with this value Mary and for that iteration, it will log student name colon Mary. For the third iteration, this item variable will be assigned with the value Steve and for that iteration, it will log student name Steve and so on as you can see here and you can see using for of loop is far more easier than using for loop. Now, if we have to achieve the same thing using for loop, then we will have to write something like this. So we will use this for keyword and then inside this parenthesis, we will have to declare a variable. Let's call it I, let's assign it with the value zero. Then we also need to write a condition saying that the value of I should be less than the length of the array. So what is the array name? It is students so students dot length and also we need to write the increment so i plus plus and then inside this we can write our logic so what do we want to do we want to log the same thing so we want to log the student name but here we don't have this item variable so here we will have to say students of i right so let's also provide a separator here so that we will come to know what result is logged by for of loop and what result is logged by for loop. Okay, let's go ahead and let's save the changes. And you can see we have the same result with the for loop as well. But using for of loop syntax, as you can see, is far better or easier than using the for loop. All right. Now we can also loop over a string using for of loop. So let's see how to do that. 
So here we already have a string called str and we want to loop over this str string and we want to log all its characters in the developer console. So all the characters which we have inside this string, we want to log it in the developer console. So for looping over this string, again, we can use for of loop. So let's say for, then we have to declare a variable. Let's call this variable s of the name of the iterable, which is str. So str. And what do we want to do here? We simply want to log each character in the developer console. So console.log, we want to log s. Let's save the changes. And here you can see all the characters which we have inside this str variable has been logged here in the console. So this is what a for of loop is. A for of loop is used to loop over iterables in JavaScript. You can also use for of loop to loop over maps, sets and other data structures. Now we have not talked about maps and sets yet, but when we will talk about maps and sets, at that time I will also show you how to loop over maps and sets using for of loop. Now before wrapping up this lecture, let me show you one interview question which can be helpful when you are facing a JavaScript interview and where the for of loop can be useful. So let's first comment these codes. So I will keep it for your reference. And let's say, so this question has been asked many times in the JavaScript interviews. So the question is, write a function to count the length of a string without using the length property. So here we have a string called str. Now we want to count the number of characters, that means the length of this string without using the length property. So Let's go ahead and let's see how we can do that. So let's write a function and let's call it count string length. Okay. And this function will take a parameter, the string for which we need to count its length. Now we can simply count the length of a string by using length property right so we can say str dot length and it will give us the number of characters a string has but here in the question it is said that we cannot use the length property so how can we do that without using the length property for that we can make use of for of loop so first let's go ahead and create a variable called count and let's set it to zero okay then let's use for of loop here. So for let s in str and for each iteration we want to increment the value of this count variable by 1. And finally when the loop is over we want to return the count variable. Now let's go ahead and call this count string length function and let's pass the str string. So we are passing this string to this function and let's also log the value which this function is returning. So console.log and let's log the value returned by this count string length function. Let's save the changes and let's see if we get the desired output. So here you can see it has returned 21. Now to validate that it is returning the correct output. Let's also log the length of this str string. So let's say console.log str.length. And this should also be 21. So this is how you can count the number of characters in a string without using the length property. Okay. So what we are doing here, we are looping over this str string. And for each iteration, we are incrementing the value of this count variable by one. And finally, when the loop is over, we will have the number of characters which this str string has inside this count variable. And finally, we are returning it from this count string length function.
So this is all from this lecture. In this lecture, you learned how to loop over iterables in JavaScript using for of loop.